Good morning everyone and welcome to Cooking with Mrs McGonigal and Edward. Uh, what we're going to hopefully do over I suppose the next few weeks is try and record a few videos. Um, we're going to start first of all with some recipes that we have um, made in school. So for some of the boys and girls who are watching this from Bearsden Primary you will have made some of these recipes before. Um, they are recipes that we have made sure are nice and healthy, are nice and balanced, but we also might put in a few wee sweet treats in there too. Mm. Uh, so today we are going to make a crustless quiche. And this is this one here, yeah, we're going to make a crustless quiche or an egg muffin, they can also be called. Uh, this is a recipe that the primary ones have actually done just this week. So primary ones, you'll be able to get involved again. You'll be able to help uh, mum and dad if they're going to help you do this recipe. And if you are slightly older from maybe primary five onwards, this is maybe a recipe that you would be able to follow on your own as long as you have the ingredients and maybe have mum and dad in the kitchen so that they can keep a wee eye on your knife skills. So the skills that we're going to be using, this is this one down here, we're going to be using our cutting and our knife skills. We're going to be using our whisking skills. We're also going to crack some eggs, which was probably the bit that most of you are going to need a wee bit of help with. And also we're going to do a wee bit of grating today. So we do need to be careful when we're using the grater that we are not um, cutting our hands. Very, very careful with our fingers and our nails when we are using the graters. So, we have already done something. What have we already done, Edward, in preparation for our visit? Washed our hands. We have washed our hands. Uh, we have done this. Why? Um, why do we wash our hands? What do we get rid of? In case you've got some germs. Yeah, we've washed our hands to get rid of all the germs. And what are we not going to do now, Edward? Touch your face. We're not going to touch your face. We're not going to touch your hair. We're not going to touch your mouth. We're not going to touch our nose, okay? So we're going to make sure that if we're not doing any chopping, that our hands are not at our face, okay? So we're going to start off and we're gonna use our knife skills today for our crustless quiche. Now we have chosen ingredients that we want to put in our crustless quiche. So um, my boys in particular, we quite like, what are these Ed? Hot dogs. We like hot dogs. So Edward and I are going to start off by chopping our hot dogs. And I'm just going to go over our cutting techniques so that you remember how to use your cutting techniques. So we both have a knife and we're just going to put it on our boards. And I'm going to start off, I'm going to keep it down until we're ready. I'm just going to quickly go over our cutting skill first. So we're not going to use our uh, bridge cut yet because that's if you're cutting something in half, but we're going to use our claw grip, okay? So taking my hot dog and using my claw grip, and Edward's going to do the same, but keep your knife down just, just now because we're just going to watch, watch me do it first. We're going to do our claw grip and this is where you can either have your nails on show or you can tuck your nails under, whichever you feel comfortable with. And what you're going to do is, as you're cutting, you are going to move your fingers back. So keep, no, no, we're not using the bridge. We're going to keep it down until we're ready. Just keep on watching until mummy started, okay? So this is what we're going to do. Claw grip, keep it down until we're ready. Claw grip, and I'm just going to show you into chopping into little slices, and my finger, is moving back and I'm getting nice little chunks which I am then going to put in a bowl. Okay, so that is me. I have used my claw grip and I have chopped my hot dog into little chunks. Now Edward's going to do the same. So claw grip, I want you to move your fingers back a little bit and you're going to chop, chop through, well done. One, and then move your fingers back a little bit. Well done, chop through, well done, keep going. Excellent. Now slow down, move your fingers back so they're right out of the way. Well done. Fingers back. Excellent. Keep going. That's it. Well done. That's it. And then the fingers back. Excellent. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put all of our hot dog into our red bowl. There it goes. Perfect. 
Now, using the same claw grip again, we are going to chop a little bit of asparagus. Now, I wish I could say that this was one of Edward's favourite foods, but this is not. This will be in the crustless quiche that mum and dad will eat. So we'll put that there. And Edward is going to chop a little bit of asparagus, and I'm going to chop a little bit of asparagus. Now, using the same technique, moving your fingers out of the way, we are going to use our claw technique again, and we're going to chop and move our fingers along. That's it, well done. Moving your fingers along, that's excellent. Okay, good boy. Now just watch, our knife is sharp. So don't worry about the wee bit that's on the floor, we'll just keep on going, okay? So you use your claw grip. I'm gonna do a few more bits of asparagus. And you can add a few more. You've got your two more bits on your board, so we'll move that along. Excellent. You've got quite a lot. I do. Okay, so taking your time, that's it. Well done, move your fingers along. Excellent knife skills, well done. All right, there's another bit. Another bit of asparagus, good skills. Make sure you're going all the way through. Well done. Well done. Do you remember the name of the vegetable you're cutting? Asparagus. Good boy, asparagus. And we're gonna pop it in the green bowl this time. Pop your knife down. Pop all of your wee bits of asparagus in your green bowl. It's green. Because it's green. But why? Well, that's not green, it's in red. Well, usually what you would do is you'll notice that there are, are we've got a wee red bowl, which is when we put our meat in red, and we've got green, which would usually be for vegetables. We don't, I didn't have two green boards, boys and girls, so we're having to use um, one red board and one green board. Normally you would use a red board for meat and a green board for vegetables, but because I didn't have two the same, we didn't, are you making funny faces? I didn't uh, use different boards, so we're just going to have to improvise today. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to do a pepper. Now, we like pepper. And I'm just going to show you again, now we've done quite a lot of peppers in school, but I'm just going to show you again how we chop a pepper. I don't want you chopping your hand while I'm showing everyone how to cut it. So using my claw grip, I'm going to chop the top off of the pepper. Now I'm going to show you my next cutting skill. So we've done the claw grip. Do you remember the name of the other grip when we hold our hand like this? It's the bridge cut, okay? So it looks a wee bit, I say when we're in the teaching kitchen, it looks a wee bit like the bridge out of Harry Potter, okay? So it's like an old fashioned bridge in Harry Potter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this pepper in half, okay? So I'm gonna come all the way through here and I'm gonna chop that pepper from there. So now I've taken the seeds out, just using my finger, it's, it's a sweet pepper. It's not a spicy pepper, so, um, I have taken the seeds out, and now what I'm gonna do, using my bridge cut, which is actually quite good at this angle, you can see exactly how I'm going to cut it in half. So I'm holding it like a bridge, and in between the bridge, the knife goes through, okay? And that's how we're going to chop it, all right? I'm gonna do the same again, using my bridge grip, grip, and I chop all the way through, and what it's done is it's given me nice wee strips of paper. The outside skin of the pepper is quite difficult to cut, but the inside fleshy part is a lot easier to cut, so that's the side that we're going to cut. So there's a bit for you, Edward. I want you to use your claw grip again, and I want you to chop it nice and small, okay? So if you look at me, we're gonna chop it nice and small, using our claw grip and moving our fingers back. Well done. Remember to move your fingers back each time. Well done, and move your fingers back. Don't worry about it sticking to your knife, and then keep moving your fingers back. Well done. Excellent cutting, okay? So we're going to chop, 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 chop. Well done, good cutting, Edward. That's a really good use of your claw grip there, well done. You get sprayed by a wee bit of juice there. <laughs> All right. Now remember, don't touch your face with your fingers. You're okay because you use the back of your hand. All right. Yeah. Now put your knife down and put your pepper in the bowl. Knife down and put pepper in the bowl. There you go. That's us. 
well done. Now, the next thing I'm going to get Edward to do while I continue with a wee bit of chopping is I'm going to get Edward to use the grater. Okay, we're going to grate a wee bit of cheese. Now, we have got a stand-up grater. I know that the ones in school are slightly different. We've got a stand-up grater. It doesn't really matter as long as you are remembering that you don't want your fingers to go too close because this is sharp on the grater, okay? So when you're going to do your grating, I'm going to give Edward a piece of cheese. Now we've chosen to, choose to use cheddar cheese and Edward is going to grate it. And the important thing to remember is you go down, you don't go too fast because you don't want to grate your fingernails and you um, don't want to cut your knuckles because they often get cut as well. So you have to grate down the grater. So you're going to put one hand on here and you're going to grate down and start grating the cheese for me. And I'm just going to continue chopping the rest of that pepper. We don't want to waste anything. Now, we have chosen ingredients that we like. If you are deciding to make these crustless quiches at home, you can add anything you like to your crustless quiche. So you could just do cheese and ham. You could just do cheese if you only have cheese at home. If you have peas in your freezer, you could add some frozen peas to your crustless quiche. It's up to you what you add, add things that you like. Um, you can also freeze your crustless quiche, so if you don't want to eat them today, but keep them maybe for another day, they make a great snack. If you do manage to get out and about, maybe even into the garden, if you decide you would like a wee picnic in your back garden, they would be great for a picnic in your back garden. So it's up to you what ingredients you like. That's okay, we keep it on this side here, okay? That's it. We just keep going up and down and up and down. That's it. You can do it by yourself. That's it. Keep going. And then when you think that your bit of cheese gets too small, it's getting close to your fingers, you're going to stop grating. Great. Is it great? It's great. It is great. Keep grating. That's it. Keep grating. Well done. You're doing well. And then we're going to have to put that in another bowl. That's it. Keep it in there. Well done. Excellent. There's quite a lot in there. There is quite a lot in there. That's okay. We like cheese. Well, Joseph and Mummy and Daddy like cheese. Edward's a very fussy eater, so we don't we don't eat cheese. But we eat cheese on pizza. Yeah. yeah. But I well, like pizza. You like pizza. Maybe we'll make a pizza one day. Will we do a pizza video one day? I already made pizza with Daddy. Oh, well, there you go. Right, keep going. Right, now watch, you're not, you need to make sure you're watching. Is our lump of cheese getting a wee bit small? Yeah. Right, so pop the leftover cheese on that. I think I'll do that. Pop, you could turn it around the other way, that's a good idea. And when you smaller than that, and that. Right, keep going then. That's it. Well, we're still doing a wee bit of grating. I'll do a mushroom. Mushroom. So we've got a mushroom, bridge cut, chop it in half. Then I find the easiest thing to do with a mushroom is to, watch your fingers, not too fast, is to then use your claw grip and just move it back so that you get little chunks. You can decide, you can use a combination of your bridge and your claw grip as long as you're being very careful when you're cutting, okay? So this is my claw grip now and I'm going to put my mushrooms in with my asparagus, okay? Well done, Edward. That looks excellent. So what we're going to do I now, I th we don't want to finish the whole thing because you'll get too close to your fingers. Okay, we're going to lift up the grater. You're going to end up with a pile of cheese and you can pop it in the bowl. That's a lot. It is a lot of cheese. That's it. Pop it in there. Well done. Excellent. Pop the cheese in. Excellent. We're not done yet. We've got almost all of our ingredients set up. Oh, and what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away the things that we're not needing anymore. And you can, right? I'll do it. it doesn't need to be flattened because we're just gonna, we're still gonna use it. So I'm gonna take this. And what I should say, boys and girls, is before we started, is that we made sure that our table and our surface was completely clear. We sprayed it with an antibacterial spray so that we knew that there was no germs on our table ready to cook. So we have got a wee tub of red peppers. 
We have got hot dogs, which are the boys' favourite. We have got asparagus and mushrooms. We have got some cheese. I also have some spinach, which I'm not going to chop. I have just given it a wee wash, which can just get added straight into the muffin case when we're ready to cook. But you can add anything to your egg muffins that you like to eat. So you could have ham, you could have tomatoes, uh, you could have sweet corn straight from the can. I think when we're not really sure what we can get in the supermarkets, you can really just wait and see what you get, what you can add in, because we're not obviously sure over the next few weeks what ingredients we'll be able to get. So you can decide what ingredients you like in particular. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this away. And I'm just going to pop it over here and I'm going to bring a clean cloth and I'm just going to wipe down our surface for Edward and I to use. Right, are you hiding or are you going to come back and sit? Don't come off. What's that? See you here. My mum looks like a giant face. <laughs> and this is the joy of filming with children. Right, come on Ed, come yes. and sit back then. I'm done. Okay. So, the next thing we are going to do is our eggs. Now, I'm going to show you or remind you how to crack an egg. Edward has been very excited about the eggs. I'm not entirely sure I want Edward to crack them all, but we're going to... We'll see how we get on. So, um, our eggs. I'm just going to remind everybody how we crack an egg. So when you're cracking an egg, you tap twice on the side of the bowl that we're using. And the reason I am using a jug is because we're going to pour our egg into our silicone mould, which is here, all right? And after making these, we're gonna put it in the silicone mould. After making these with the primary ones, Mr. Cameron and I at Bearsden Primary realised that you must have your um, tray on, and then your muffin tray on top, your uh, silicone tray on top, because otherwise it's very difficult to move your muffins into the oven. Edward's reacting like he's done this before. So I'm just going to show you very quickly how we're going to crack our egg. And what I've got just at the side here is a plate of things that we're not using. So I've got a wee bit of pepper left there and all I'm gonna do is put the eggshell on there so we're not dripping. After we have cracked and whipped the egg, we will probably need to go and wash our hands yeah. because we don't want to get any germs from the egg. Okay, so we need to be very careful. So egg cracking, one, two. You'll notice I've got a slight crack. My thumbs go in and I, open it up okay you can have a shot okay so we're going to tap it twice on the side one two well done another you want because i think you want a slightly bigger crack well done now put your thumb in without without breaking it thumbs in one thumb in other thumb in here well done not bad and i actually don't think we get any shell in okay mommy will do another one and then you can take another one too. Crack, crack. There it goes. Right, try again. Crack, crack. Well done. Now put your thumbs in. It's okay. Thumbs in. And then pull it apart. Keep going. Well done. Not bad. I think we might have got one wee bit of shell in there, so I'll fish it out, but pop it on the plate. Yeah. One wee bit in. I can see it. So can I. We'll get that out, won't we? That doesn't look so elegant. I got it. No, no. You don't need to put your fingers in. Thank you. One one messy finger is enough. Next one. One, two. So, Edward, do you know what parts of the egg we've got here? Yeah. What have we got? What's this? What's the outside bit called? You don't do it. What's the outside of the egg called? Um, the shell. The shell. Do you know what the inside bit's called? The yellow bit? Not sure? Egg. Well, we've got the egg, it's the yolk, and then we've got the egg white. So we've, we've got, our egg is made up of three different bits, right? A good crack. Big crack, one, two, well done. One more. That's it, now put your two fingers in. Pull it apart. Oh, that was your best yet. Well done, good boy. Pop that on the tray. 
And now what I want you to go and do is give your hands a wee wash for me, okay? Okay, I'm going to come and wash my hands as well, okay? So Edward's going to go and wash his hands. You can wash your hands up there, up at the kitchen, up at the kitchen sink. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start whisking the eggs. So we'll whisk our eggs. And what you can do now is you can add a small amount of milk to your mixture and that will make it slightly more like a quiche. You don't need to add milk, um, it will work if you don't add milk and it will work if you do. So that is my eggs whipped, I'm just going to put that to one side. I'm going to take this away and I'm also going to go and wash my hands. Edward's going to come back and he'll no doubt entertain you for a minute. today is we have to choose what ingredients we are going to put in our crustless quiches okay so Edward what are you going to eat are you going to put hot dog in yours okay so you put no 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 in this you're going to put them in so what we've got if I just show you we have got our silicone tray and the idea is going to be to put your ingredients in here and then we're going to top it up with egg and then we'll put them in the oven to bake so Edward drops some in Okay, you put it in any one. I put a few in. You know that Joseph likes hot dog too. So, so this is, this can be Joseph's. That can be Joseph's. I'll put five in for a minute. I'm going to put some peppers in. Joseph's got five. Perfect. And for five. Right. And I don't really like hot dogs so much. So you'll maybe not put as many hot dogs so in? I'll just put three. Three hot dogs. One, two, three, and Joseph's. Joseph's got five. You'll be able to tell the difference then, won't you? Because Joseph's will have more hot dog in it. Yeah, I don't really want to put five. I only want two. Oh, you want to stop together. Mummy's going to put some vegetables in the other ones. Perfect. Would you like to get some cheese? And would you put some cheese in these other ones? I know that you don't like cheese, but Joseph likes cheese. So why don't, don't you add some cheese to Joseph's one as well? Well done. Perfect. Well done. Well, I think once they're cooked, you can have them for lunch. I think you could actually make Joseph two. Yeah, we'll put two oh, in with hot dogs and cheese, so there we go. We'll put them in there. Because I think Joseph I've might need two. I've got cheese in mine. I'll take a bit of cheese out. There you go. That's it. So we've got our hot dog. There we go. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to the bigger ones a wee bit of spinach. So that some spinach well done what a good helper you are today there we go stack them up well done last one last one put some in this one the hot dog one well done we did well there last wee bit last wee bit and what i'm going to do is just get a little bit of milk for our mix and I'm going to let you give it a wee stir. I've only got a hot dog in mine. You've only got a hot dog in yours. Right, what I'm going to let Nine. you do is I'm just going to add a wee bit of milk. Nine. You can mix it. So this is your whisking skills. Okay, give it a wee mix. So this is your whisking. Mummy, No, you need to use a fork when you're whisking eggs because otherwise it would just mix around the bowl and it wouldn't properly whisk. So give it a good whisk, a wee bit faster. Well done. And that's mixing all of the milk in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pour egg into our silicone tray. That's it, well done. Well, we need to put egg in it. So this is basically going to become like an omelette in a muffin cake. In a muffin cake. <laughs> I did say that Edward was a fussy eater. <laughs> I think he'll be 
be surprised, you might like it. So, right, you're going to help me pour it in. So I'll do the first one just to show you. Right, sit back down for me. I'll do the first one just to show you. And what we're going to do is we're going to pour the egg in. So it's not overflowing. All right, do you want to do one for me? Yes, I'll Be very one. careful. You're going to do your one up at the top? Yes. All right. Perfect. Next one. Next one. Well done. Well done. Super. Well, there's a lot of cheese in that one, isn't there? Yeah. Now, what we're going to have to do, we did seven eggs there, but actually what we're going to have to do is do another couple of eggs just to make sure that we fill in our tray. But that is us finished. We are finished our cooking. I will take a picture. Sit down for me, Ed, so that everybody can see. We can say bye to everybody. Um, these are going to go in the oven. The oven has been on and has preheated to 200 degrees. And they will probably take about maybe 12 to 15 minutes. You'll be able to tell yourself when they're totally cooked. And I know that Mummy and Daddy and Joseph will enjoy theirs. And hopefully Edward will eat his that has just got a hot dog in it. What will we say to everybody? Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. And we hope to try and bring you a few more videos over the next few weeks when we are in the house more than what we would normally be. Bye, everyone. Bye.